Hello everybody, I'm Matthew, also known as Samurai Hex, and welcome back to another episode of Manager of Legends Gentleman Save with me, Matthew, and our 60 year old Neil Brannan in this penultimate episode of the series. After this episode ends, that's it, there'll be one more, and then the series ends for Gord for FM24. Whether I'll be returning to it in FM25 or FM26, I don't know, because I'm focusing more on the one off. Uh, episodes, but I, could, I think you can still fit in a journeyman there, here or there. Maybe not a let's play journeyman, but maybe like a season review journeyman or something along those lines. Who knows? Um, but yeah, if you're excited for this episode or you're excited for the end of this series, give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel as well for more FM24 content. Uh, I'm going to be, like I said, doing this. I've also done a Dove County save, I've done a Arsenal save. I'm currently in the process of doing a Chesterfield rebuild. Uh, it's going to be a multi-part rebuild, uh, but it's got like five seasons per episode. And yeah, and the aim for that is to become the most successful team in Derbyshire. So I think Derby have won what two Premier League titles, or well, two top tier titles, and one FA Cup. So in other words, they aim for Chesterfield is to win four Premier League titles and two FA Cups and become the most successful team in Derbyshire and that is the aim for that. Uh, I've also got Tactical Masterclass and I've also got the sequel to the save which I'll now reveal is going to be in the same universe as this so the same save, same save file uh, but what it will be is it will be using the game editor to create two um, sons of Neil Brannan as well as me creating a, another character being ma another manager being the son of Neil Brannan as these three sons going into a random nation pick randomly with a random generator number um, picking three random clubs in the same position like mid table or something like that or something like that uh, or lower down or higher up, I don't know. Um, and then seeing which team, which manager can get up the leagues in that nation to win the top tier um, and the corps. And then once someone's won all of them, the top tier cups and the top tier title, uh, then we'll then use a random generator and move to another nation. And do the same thing with the three managers again. So yeah, uh, that's why I've had this little thing gone um, the entire time FM24 has been going with this save, even though I haven't used it. I will be using it soon. But yeah, that is basically why I've had the game editor allowed in this save, so I can do little fun scenarios like that. So if you're looking forward to that, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for mobile notifications. And yeah, let's get into the episode. So first we'll go with transfers because it is the 20th of February. Um, so end of, well, not end of the season, but all of January. Um, we loaned out a few players. Uh, Bastian Mallet, who he played a couple of times or one time for us in the league. Or in the cup or something, he's been loaned out. Uh, Lucky or Lucky uh, has also been loaned out. He played one time. Richard Bon, who had been playing a few times in the league as well, and he's done improved quite drastically. Um, but yeah, Ricardo was sold to Flamengo in Brazil. He was unhappy because he had treated him fairly too many times. Now that is because he was a squad player. I didn't have room for him in any of my Champions League squads for the past two seasons so he could get unhappy and he eventually said I can't deal with you anymore and so because of that he was just brought in hardly playing never been picked in Champions League squad because of that reason um, so yeah he in the end has gone on a I think a lower transfer than what we had signed him for to Flamengo, uh, no, we signed for 13.5 million, rising to 17.5, so it won't pay the extra 4 million, but we end up getting 10 million pound more that could rise to 15 million, 15 million pound more 
if the clothes are all made up and done and all that stuff. But yeah, the rest of the transfers in January. Alejandro joins us as a youngster. Uh, I don't think he'll ever be good enough. And at 21 years old, uh, um, we also had to accept. Apparently, the director of football accepted the deal on the uh, basis that he could be sold back to them for like £950,000 if need be. And that is crazy because he's now worth £6 million. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, they have a six, they have like a one million pound fee to get him back Real Madrid though, and yeah, stupid. Uh, hopefully he doesn't ever get that good. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ros Gamora, uh, another youngster, he'll never be good enough. He joins from Barcelona or Barcelona speed side and Real Madrid speed side, both of them. Then Godin joins us as a youngster, looks a lot better prospect than the other. Two and uh, comes in on transfer from Salta Vigo. Francesco Di Cesare um, joins us on a cheap deal from Inter. Another cheap deal from Inter was Andrea Ciano. Uh, he looks good as well. And uh, then Humanus van der Broek, who, if you have been around this channel on this series and all that stuff, you'll know we had him at Crystal Palace uh, where he did quite decently. Uh, he's then gone to Leipzig, uh, and then immediately was sold to Hamburg on the loss. Almost half of half, well, yeah, half of the money Leipzig bought, they then sold him to Hamburg, and then we've then doubled that money almost for them uh, when signing him for Lille. Where he's been really, really good so far. He joins us. Alex Montgomery also joins us. He's a youngster. He'll never be good enough on a free transfer, well not on a free transfer, on a cheap deal from Glenavon. I think that's because of me having a Northern Irish nationality in this game, um, with the whole Neil Brandon being Northern Irish. So because of that, he has extensive knowledge or something of that uh, of Northern Ireland. So sometimes we sign young Northern Ireland players. It's also why we've got McClelland, I reckon, in the youth intake a few years ago. Uh, because he's Northern Irish and all that stuff. And I reckon that's because of Neil Brannan. But yeah, um, Silva Buoneto, also a youngster, comes in from Roma. He'll never be good enough. And then Matthias Kutz Koch uh, joins us as a squad player, overpriced player from Norwich City. Now, Norwich City are in the Championship. Uh, I'm sure he's had a good season with Norwich in the Championship and he had a decent season last year in the Premier League with Norwich. Uh, but £31 million for him, which was the, like, the relegation release clause, I think it's overpriced. For a player that's only two and a half stars, and now he's already unhappy with me because I left him out of the Champions League squad when he's a two and a half star player that should never be a squad player. I say it all the time. Two and a half star players to never be squad players. They should be fringe players or impact subs or worse. You never put a two and a half star player as a squad player unless you only have two and a half star players in your squad and then they would obviously be demanding an important player and you'll have to be giving them that. But yeah, uh, he is already unhappy with me and because of that I'm not playing him at all the entire time I'm at Lille. Or, well, for the re remainder of the time I'm at Lille. For, so next year, whoever joins Lille after me uh, will obviously have a bit of a situation to deal with with Kotcher. Because uh, yeah, he's just not good enough and he's already upset me. So he doesn't get played. But the results, so... Since last time, which was the St Etienne win, we played Feyenoord in the UEFA Champions League League phase, beat them 2-1, then beat Tulu, who at the time was second, 3-0. Trois, we drew 2-2. Nantes, we, drew, we won 5-0. Applewell, we actually drew 2-2, which is a disappointing draw there. Then we beat PSG 2-0. Monaco, this, was, this game could have been the 50th game undefeated in the league and we lost it 3-2 because of an end goal by Bastian Malay who is a two and a half two star player who's been loaned out to Dino Kiev but he played that one time off the bench and scored an own goal 
So yeah, I kind of wish I hadn't had him on the subs bench, but okay. Um, disappointing. It could have been 50 games unbeaten in the league. And like I said last episode, I've never got 50 games unbeaten in the league ever before. It looks like that's why it's going to have to be a bit longer. Uh, but then we played Crystal Palace and drew 1-1. Lons, we drew 1-1. Beat Lorient, 2-1. Beat Juventus in the league phase, 3-2. Angers, we won 2-0. Montpellier, we won 3-1. Leipzig we drew 1-1, Nice we won 4-2, Lyon we won 1-0, Lons we won 3-0, Balloon who were a rival of Lyon we won 2-0. Uh, let's get into the 11th round of the Coupe de France. Then Antwerp we won 1-0, Rennes we won 4-1, Sporting we won 4-0, Guingamp we won 4-0, Stade de Rennes we won 3-0, then played Stade de Rennes again in the league and won 2-0 before beating St Etienne 4-2 in the league and just recently beating Marseille 1-0 in the quarterfinal of the Coupe de France and today if we have enough time we'll have the Toulouse game and the Marseille game uh, I reckon with how this episode has gone so far we'll only have availability for the Toulouse game obviously unless um, the Toulouse game is like dead short uh, but yeah we might as well just get straight into the episode, uh, into the game, but first we'll show you the, the results. So currently we are top of the league, 8 points ahead of 2nd place Marseille, with only that one loss the whole game. Toulouse, who are the nearly pro side, are still in the top 4, which is crazy. Uh, and Champions League, we ended up finishing 2nd in the qualifying round league phase, in the end only a point behind first place Liverpool which is really good to say considering last episode last season and the season before the heart that um, we were like here um, so it's just that we've improved got better yeah the game against Toulouse so we've got Sam Gardo in goal we've got Francois Hosser as our right back Mara Janovic as our centre back alongside Van der Broek Vesquez as our left back then Juan Jose Vidal and Adam Hill as our two midfielders. Nuno as our right winger. Vincenzo Braun as our attacking midfielder in the centre. Dak Cram as our AML. And Julian Navarro as our striker. That leaves McCar Mc Michael Beck, uh, Mario Fazzi, Emily uh, Cherta, Giovanni Campbell, Alvaro, Leopold Schumacher, and Gianfranco Ronchi, Domingo, uh, Domingo Ascura and Stefan Duez all on the bench. Now Domingo Escura is unhappy because he wants to get more playing time to get international set up. I said can you exp I'll be happy with squad play, he said no chance. He wants to be a regular star and I'm like I can't guarantee that uh, considering we've got Akram as the four star, Vicenzo Brown as four star, Nuno as four star, Navarro as four star and he's only three star. And I know he can possibly play in centre back because he's been trained there but he's more so a winger. <laughs> he's like centre back is the like dead last chance. So yeah, he actually I'm thinking of Franchi, it's uh, a scorer. Yeah, he's just not good enough to be a regular star, which he wants. So yeah, he's unhappy. Um, Caprego is also unhappy. He's only played six times this entire season. Um, he came up to me saying he wanted more game time. I was saying. Can you accept fringe play or squad play or something along those lines? It's like, no chance, I'm star player. Uh, and it's like, dude, you're three and a half star. You're now three star, you're not a star player for me. Um, so we've fallen out. And he's now said he's leaving on a free transfer. I've tried to say, oh, okay, I'll sell you now because of that. And he was all happy with that. So yeah, our relationship with him has deteriorated. Uh, Koch, like I said, is also unhappy because of not being in the Champions League squad. When, why would I remove someone in the Champions League squad who's shown themselves as a good player when a player of his quality is just coming to the side? We don't know if he's going to be any good. It's a bit of a dead gamble picking him over someone else who's more deserving, uh, especially with him two and a half star, which he isn't a squad player. I don't know why the football keeps doing it. Uh, but also, an unhappy player is Marcelo Henrique, who is also unhappy because I've been treated unfairly too many times by the manager. I think that's because he's also been removed from the Champions League squad and he's not happy with that either. But yeah, the game against Toulouse. So, I'll just say what the assistant manager wants to say and we'll get into the game. Half time, we've had a couple of chances, nothing 
really on target, I don't think so. Not good enough really. As 57th minute, we'll make our first two subs of the game, I think. Navarro's not been good enough. Um, so Fazzy and for him. Uh, and I reckon we'll also take off his hair for Cherta. And while we're at it, we might take off Nuno, who's not been brilliant today. Um, apart from Duez. Um, and yeah, there'll be those three subs for now. As we will now make our substitutions. I think Nagy, Akram Nagy's not been good enough. So Alvaro for him. And uh, Adam Hill, maybe. Or Vasquez because he's nervous for Campbell. I know Campbell's not brilliant. Uh, left back, he's more of a winger, but he has been trained there, and he's doing quite well. He's now been trained to be a DM, um, so yeah, hopefully he will do really, really well. Yeah, left back, as it's a, a good chance of Fazzy with the free kick. I know how good he can be at free kicks, and he passes it to Adam Hill, and Adam Hill scores. Right, good move off the training ground there. And it's because Fazzy's on the field. Whenever he's on the field, he and we get free kicks. He always does well. Just passing it to Ad, uh, Adam Hill, and Adam Hill scores to make it one 0 there. And thankfully, we're not losing this game. Hopefully, and that is full time. I'm though going to say we were not that performance was unacceptable because we should have won that game by more. We weren't in the game at all really, and we we're lucky to get a win. Um, but yeah, because of that lack of well. Highlights will now go into the game against Marseille. Well, hopefully, we'll be better because Marseille are a much better side than Toulouse. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you for that in a bit. Aaron Acevedo will be leaving to Al Weda in the Saudi Pro League at the end of his contract at the end of the year. For some reason, it does not say there, and I don't know what we can even do to fix it. Uh, but yeah, it should say on the outs, but. For some reason it doesn't, it doesn't even say on the info page information thing uh, I think it's a glitch in the game since the new update um, but yeah whether it's because of the skin that hasn't been updated since before the new update I don't know um, but yeah the game against Marseille uh, now Stadium is now a 60,000 seat a stadium. I don't know what the capacity is expect can get expanded to it should say here uh, It can expand to 62,000 so we're only 2,000 off and getting it to the max it can actually be uh, We've also improved our youth facilities. So we're now 20 out on all four of them um, So we are one of the literally one of the best teams in the world probably the best thing in in France right now. Um, but yeah, the team going to this game has got Salvagada in goal. Giovanni Campbell playing as a right back for today. Marginovic and Van der Broek as our two centre backs. Uh, Vasquez as our left back. We've got Mbombo and Adam Hill as our two midfielders. Um, Nuno as our right winger. Bron as AMC. He's been playing there mostly this season. And he's got 16 goals and 7 assists, so he's been really good. Nuno's been playing a right winger. You've got 16 goals and 14 assists, so they found their like life positions with us. Um, but yeah, um, now Juarez, our left winger, he hasn't been playing much to be fair. Mario Fazzi, he's done good at strike with 14 goals, mostly up for more strike positions. And then on the bench, it's Beck, Almanza, Akram, Navarro, Akivium, Duez, Ronchi, Ronchi, Bertrand Duran, and John, Jose and Vidal. As we get a highlight in the 10th minute is with Van der Broek gives it to Marjanovic to Campbell who nearly loses gives it to Mbombo who gives it to Nuno who gives it to Fazzi and Mario Fazzi scores for a 1-0 but is it offside? That is the thing. Goal has been awarded. It's 1-0 Lil in this all important game. Half time, we've in charge of the game, but Marseille probably been having the more chances on the highlights. Notice that Nuno is injured, so he will be taken off for probably for Fazzy to go at right winger, and then we'll play probably 
yeah, probably Navarro as a striker. Another highlight, 60th minute. It looks like it's going to be another highlight from Mosse. How we intercepted on Navarro, who hasn't got much support, passes it to Mabombay. He passes it all the way back to Adam Hill. He can shoot, and he does, and he scores, and it's 2 0 Lil. And hopefully, that is us signifying that we're going to win this league again. Uh, it's not the end of their game, though, but well, it's a good win if we do get this win. As I will make probably a couple more subs. Adam Hill is tired now, and I'm going to rest him, you know. Uh, probably John Jose Vidal for him. And Vincenzo Bron is quite tired. So Durand, who is a youngster, will probably come on for him and see how good he can get. So in the first minute, we'll make our last two subs of the game. I think VM, he's played a couple of times so far this season, come on as left back. Or is he better off as right back? He's better off as right back. So Campbell could go as left back, but we can also take... Actually, no. Um... Probably Alvaro then for Dewars. And yeah, there'll be the subs for this game. And yeah, that is full time. A 2 0 victory against Marseille. It's a very good result. And it solidifies ourselves as the best team in France. Because Marseille are the second team, best team on paper. And the past couple of seasons have been the best team in France. So yeah. Hopefully now, because of now having an 11 point gap, we won't really mess up most games now and we'll win the title. But yeah, that is enough for this episode. So if you have enjoyed this episode, give the video a like. Um, subscribe to the channel as well, because I've told you what's coming up with the channel. So if any of that excites you, if you stuck around to this episode, the end of this episode, then like the video, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell as well for mobile notifications so you never miss an upload. Anyway, I've been Matthew, also known as Summer Hex, and I'll see you all next time. Hex signing out. Bye, everybody.